what happens when the world of true crime and perverts collide? It makes a big mess. <laughs> and then, and then we take a look at the story of a man who loved drugs so much, he turned himself into one. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. Hope you guys are having a great day too. Hope you guys had a great weekend. It's actually still Thursday for me here. I'm recording some episodes up so I can take a little vacation this weekend. I'm just going to read. I'm just going to spend the whole weekend reading and getting stuff ready for future episodes of Dead Rabbit Radio. And we couldn't have future episodes of Dead Rabbit Radio without people who support the show. And speaking of supporters right now, there's a little red dot on my chest. It's moving around. Give a round of applause for the man who's about to shoot me. It's Sniper. Sniper is our newest Patreon supporter. Sniper, go ahead. You don't have to shoot me. You don't have to shoot me. Come on down from your perch. You're going to be our captain, our pilot this episode. If you guys can't support the Patreon, I totally understand. Another great way to help support the show is to spread the word. Let your friends, family, and coworkers know about the show. That also really ensures the future of the show. So, Sniper, go ahead and take off your night vision goggles because we're going to do some day driving. I'm going to toss you the keys to the Jason Jalopy, and we are going to head on out to New Orleans in Louisiana. (coughs) Cars driving down the road. You know, every so often, I get the criticism about the show. That people go, the show used to be better. The show used to be better back the first 50 episodes were better or whatever. And that's fine. I can take criticism. But I don't understand. I think that I think there's a kind of a difference between how what the show is and how some people view it. It's an it's a, like a news show. I report the stories that are presented to me, either that I find or people recommend. And whenever I hear that criticism or or that it's not really a criticism, it's just that that's their opinion. To me, it's the same thing as if you walked up to a journalist and said, "Hey, man, I really like the news better." Back on September 11th, it was super exciting. I was glued to my television for like two weeks. September 11th, 2001. How come you don't do news like that anymore? Journalists would go, well, because it doesn't... It, uh, thankfully, it doesn't happen that much. Or at all. Nothing that big. So it's the same thing. The show is the stories that are presented to me. So, yeah, sure, I, I had like Eggless Travel back then. The Ocean at Night. I had some classic episodes. But I don't do ARGs. I really don't. I, I'll touch on creepypastas every once in a while. But I do the stories that I find. And I generally do them while I find them. But again, and it's a valid opinion. But I just think there's a disconnect between what the show is. And I think people do kind of confuse it sometimes with shows that cover ARGs. Or like these long myth building episodes and things like that. That being said. <laughs> that all of, <laughs> That all being said. Sniper, go ahead and pull up outside of this house in New Orleans, Louisiana. The year is 2019. And there's a young babysitter walking into a house. Now, apparently there's a thing called a babysitter app where you can pull... It sounds like something a serial killer would design, right? It's like Grubhub, but for serial killers. You can order babysitters to come to your house. That's terrifying. Why would anyone create this app or use this app? But apparently there are babysitter apps where you can order babysitters. <laughs> so, so spooky. There's this guy. His name is Rutledge Diaz the Fourth. He's 29 years old, and he has a younger brother named Corey. 17-year-old younger brother who unfortunately severely disabled. He can't bathe himself. He has to wear a diaper. He can't really go anywhere. He's just this disabled dude who's like mentally disabled and physically disabled. And Rutledge can't really take care of him. So he calls up his his grub hub for babysitters and orders a babysitter. <laughs> I can't even say it without laughing. It sounds like something Dracula would use. Rutledge, though, is not Dracula. He has this babysitter come to take care of his younger brother, Corey, because he has to, you know, make money. Babysitters aren't free. So, using this app, Corey is actually able to get the help that he needs. So, I mean, he's 17 years old. He's he's a, a almost an adult, physically. So, you have to carry him around. He's pretty heavy. I'm complaining about it. That's why I'm not a babysitter. I'm like, oh, that sucks. You're too heavy. Lose some weight. 
They have to carry him around. They have this giant car seat for him to go in. They pick him up, uh, put him in the car seat, drive around town. Maybe he just likes to like look out the window. It doesn't say. They just say that he has a giant car seat. <laughs> I don't know why that detail's in this story, but I just find it amusing. And he wears diapers all the time. Now, he's constantly pooping his diapers, and you can't get mad at him, right? He doesn't know any better. Babies, like, has the mind of a baby. Babies don't know better. He's constantly pooping his diaper. But there's a lot of babysitters that use this app. There's a lot of babysitters that take care of Corey. Kind of gets known in town that Corey can be a little difficult. But overall, he's probably a good guy. November 13th, 2019. Police, we have a warrant! Uh, <coughs> They kick down his door. Rutledge Diaz is like, what's going on? What's going on? Cops come storming. I don't know if it was that dramatic. <laughs> he just knocked and he opened the door. But in my version, psh, breaking through windows and knocking over piles of diapers and making a little barricade. Rutledge is hiding behind a giant car seat. What do you officers want? There is no Corey, apparently. Doesn't exist. It's not like it's not like Joker's fake girlfriend, like all the babysitters just hallucinated this giant baby. Plot twist, Rutledge is Corey. Rutledge, allegedly, is a big old pervert. <laughs> Definitely there's a hard allegedly on that one. Rutledge allegedly came up with this plan. I really, really like pooping my pants. And I bought this giant car seat, and I don't know what to use it for. If only there was a way I could combine my love of pooping and being cleaned with this, with this app that I discovered that I could order women to come to my house. Aha, I have it. So he begins, as he's coming up with an idea, he's pooping his pants. He's like, aha, an idea has come to me. Instead of a light bulb, it's just a big brown load in his pants. He loves, again, this is all alleged. This is the last time I'll say it, but he loves pooping his pants. <laughs> you definitely have to say allegedly before that. And he loves women cleaning it up. So he actually thought this would be a great idea to combine the two, like Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. But you don't want to know where the chocolate's coming from. Babysitters are constantly, this goes on for a while, but eventually, one of them, she visited the house ten times, and she thought, this doesn't, this seems a little suspicious. I went over to his house, I realized he was really good at Super Smash Brothers. But then, like, he's like, gaga goo goo, and he's pooping his pants. Like, I thought it was bizarre that he was able to make a martini, but, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's the one thing this baby can do. So the cops do arrest him, and apparently in Louisiana, I did not know this. It's good to know if you live in Louisiana and you're thinking about being a criminal, if you commit labor fraud in Louisiana, basically if you hire someone under false pretenses, that's human trafficking. That's a 10-year charge. If you tell someone, hey, why don't you come over, I'll pay you to like wash my car, and they get over there, and you're like, oh no, I want you to paint my fence instead, Tom Sawyer, that would basically be human trafficking. He was facing 40 years in prison for this scheme. He was basically charged with sexual battery because while he was pooping his pants, the women were cleaning him and he was getting gratification from that. So that's where those charges came from. He got charged with four counts of human trafficking and one count of possession of a controlled dangerous substance. I'll give you one guess as to what drug he was on. So if you ever go over to a house and there's a giant baby smoking meth, could be this guy. And actually, I just realized I don't have to say allegedly. He actually got sentenced on this. Five years probation. We do have another story, another similar story, in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it because it's pretty much the exact same story. But I did think it was weird. This guy also used the babysitter app. I, I, I think that's going to be a huge issue forward. If I, I just learned out that you could order a babysitter to your house. And if I know about it... And there's a whole bunch of lunatics. There's a whole bunch of weirdos who happen to be reading the news that day. And they found out about this as well. But this guy was using the same thing. His name is Paul Anthony Machaca. 30-year-old man. He told people he had Down syndrome and pretended to be his mom through the babysitter app, was hiring babysitters, and the mom, quote-unquote, the mom was saying, my son, he's such a good boy, but when he poops his pants, you better punish him and give him a nice long bath. Babysitters are like, what? But hey, you know, it's whatever. It's $18 an hour. And it was this weird scheme. His parents did not know he was doing this. He was living at home. The mom, uh, the fake mom, would say, my son's going to be at some random location in Phoenix, Arizona. It's like, where's Waldo? But involving a pervert. My son's going to be at some random location in Phoenix, Arizona. We'll tell you where he's at. You don't actually have to go searching for him. There's like a timer. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? You find him at this random location. You don't find him. We tell you where he's at. He's basically say, pick me up at the mall. Take him to a neutral location. 
doesn't say for sure, but I'm assuming like a, a hotel room or something like that. And if he pooped his pants, you punish him, you put him in the corner, but and then give him a nice long bath, and then you drop him off at a, another random location. They're using random not to find this guy. They're just imagining a pervert, and it's all bing. He does this for months. He does this for like he gets away with this for like ten months, and three different babysitters are washing him. And a lot of times, when they're washing the bathtub, he's like more, more washy wash, more washy wash. And he would get like I don't know if he made baby voices, but he's getting really mad, and they had to vigorously wash his genitals. And one of the babysitters finally goes, listen, this is super suspicious. I made a lot of money doing this, but now I'm suspicious. And so she followed him home. She followed another babysitter dropping him off. She followed him home like straight up Nancy drew this dude. And when he walked into his house, she went up, knocked on the door and was like, hey, I'm your son's babysitter. I just want to be clear. Your son does have Down syndrome, right? And you want us to punish him when he poops his pants. And the mom, the mom <laughs> answers the door is like, Hey, Paul, Paul, I think we have something to talk about. This woman's telling me that you're a bad, bad boy when you poop your pants. He has not been sentenced yet. So allegedly, all that stuff was alleged. He got arrested though in 2018 and hasn't been charged yet. So I don't know if he's putting it off. Because, you know, a lot of times when you get arrested, you have the chance to drag the trial out as long as possible. You have the right to a speedy trial. But if you have a lawyer and you have money, you can make it last as long. Like, you can keep doing delays. And if you're free on bail, why rush it? Why rush the trial? So you just keep delaying it over and over again if you have the money for it. So that could be what he's doing. It's all alleged. Maybe he is a good boy and not a bad boy. I don't know. I don't want to determine that because it might give him a boner either way, allegedly. But that is that story. Kind of piggybacked on the other one. Bunch of perverts running around in diapers. Now... It's time to end pervert land. <laughs> There's not a button to do that. You go, dude, Tumblr disappears. Sniper, I want you to get us out of pervertville. Call in that carpenter copter. <laughs> We're all jumping on board. Got the machine guns manned in case a bunch of baby <laughs> human babies are chasing us. <laughs> World War Z, they're like pooping. They're making a giant poop mountain towards us. Sniper, go ahead and take us out of here. We are headed out to... Nebraska. <laughs> this story was sent to me by Mason, a longtime listener of the show, longtime supporter of the show. And I don't know if even he understood the gravity of this story. Really, really appreciate it. He sent me a lot of good stuff. Really big supporter of the show. But I don't know if even he understands the gravity of the story because I didn't get it until maybe 10 minutes before recording this podcast. Check this out. All the information I got from this is from a website called iflscience.com. It's an article written by James Felton. And it's based on a medical report that was recently written by a bunch of doctors. So in Nebraska, there is a man. We don't have his name because this was written in a medical journal. We're going to call him Alexander. He's 30 years old and he has had some difficulties with his life. He's an opioid addict. He's suffering from major depression. And he has decided to stop taking his bipolar medication. And his family obviously is not happy with that. They want to support him. But they're starting to notice he's having these wild mood swings around the house. Dealing with all of that stuff isn't fun. And then not taking your medication is really just compounding it. But he's decided, like many people who suffer from mental illness, he's decided to self-medicate doesn't want the pharmaceutical medications. No, he's going to self-medicate using recreational stuff. He decides to try magic mushroom tea. And that's where you take one of those special magic mushrooms, the cyclobin, blah, 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 Latin stuff, mushrooms. And you pour hot water over it and it makes a psychoactive tea, a magic mushroom tea. So he's like, has his legs crossed, his little Mr. Miyagi moment. He's pouring Mr. Miyagi super driven out. He's catching flies that don't exist. He's pouring the little teapot over the magic mushrooms and he's brewing this tea. And he's like, mm, yes. Now, recently they just passed a law in Oregon allowing veteran groups to be able to use magic mushrooms for depression therapy. There's actually a lot of studies. I'm not a huge fan of hallucinogenics. I don't use them. I have a lot of friends who do and I don't judge them for doing it, but I'm not a hallucinogenic fan myself. But they, had, they passed a law saying we can use this for therapy. There are a lot of studies showing that it works for depression and drug abuse, drug addiction. 
So it would make sense that he was suffering from depression. He's suffering from an opioid addiction. He thinks maybe I can help alleviate that by drinking this magic mushroom tea. Specifically, he was looking at the idea of microdosing, where you take tiny, tiny, like super tiny amounts of it over time so you don't get the full effect. Microdosing, the science is still out on that. But someone who already has a drug addiction, it's probably not the best path to go on because you start off microdosing, eventually you're mega dosing because you're a drug addict. You're just changing your drug of choice. But maybe magic mushrooms will end all of that, right? That's the idea. He'll have an awakening. So he brews this magic mushroom tea. Now that might have worked if he had gone about the standard plan. Like an organ, you can do the magic mushrooms, but it like has to be in a controlled environment. It has to be given out by a certified doctor or something like that. He takes this tea. He smells that the steam's coming off the tea. This tea is psychoactive at this point. And he goes to take a drink and he goes, no, no, that's, that's where the normies. He puts the teacup down. He gets a little cotton ball. He pulls out a syringe. <laughs> he puts the syringe in the tea and filters out the impurities through the cotton ball. <clears throat> Syringes make that noise, don't, don't you know? He injects himself with the magic mushroom tea. It begins to flow through his veins. <sighs> a couple days later, his family finds him. He's laying on the floor. I have in my notes extreme confusion. That was the best way I could say extreme confusion. He was lit. He was gone. He was so high days later and he can't talk. He's just kind of flopping around. Obviously, the family's immediately alarmed by that. But he's also yellow. <laughs> he's turned yellow. The area is full of diarrhea. <laughs> Those two guys from the first story, they're like taking notes. They're like, what was his recipe? He was yellow. He was pooping everywhere. And as the family comes in, he can't talk. He's extremely confused. He looks at them and he begins to vomit blood. This isn't, this isn't creepypasta. This isn't a medical journal. They obviously call 911. He's taken to the hospital. His organs are failing. His lungs are failing. He has septic shot, extreme liver damage, which is what gave him jaundice. Also, one of the things, symptoms they noted was nausea. That's the least of your problems. When you're, when you're having diarrhea and throwing up blood at the same time, do they really need to put down his tummy hurt? We know he has nausea. His organs are failing. And on top of all of that, the doctors realize this dude is tripping balls. Like, this dude is out of it. Now, they can obviously figure out that he injected this tea. I don't think he injected the tea and was like, oh, now I'm going to watch a couple episodes of The Simpsons. And then maybe I'll start, like, going to conspiracy websites. Like, I like the... He got lit right away. So they would have found the syringe, they would have found the tea, the mushrooms, all of that stuff. But he's in the ICU at this point. He's totally messed up. The doctors are trying to figure out how to save him. How to reverse all this stuff. And they start to notice clots in his blood. And they're like, right, who knows what is going on now? Like, he's done all this damage. Who knows what's going on? So they start taking blood samples and they start looking at it through the microscope. They notice this is so insane. In his blood, he is growing mushrooms. When he was making the tea, when he was putting the boiling water over the mushroom, it was releasing spores into the tea. And he injected the spores into his veins, and they could tell that the fungus was growing in his bloodstream. And they think that is why he was still high. He turned himself into a magic mushroom. It is unclear, because they don't know for sure, but they wrote in this report, it is unclear whether active intravascular infection with a psychoactive fungus may prompt persistent psychoactive effects as seen with ingestion of the same species. Unquote. So it's in him, and it's not going away. The fungus is growing in his bloodstream and keeping him high. Until you're able to kill the fungus in there, you're going to be tripping balls. He turned himself into a magic mushroom full of spores. He was in the ICU for eight days. They released him from the ICU. 
He was in the hospital for another 22 days. And now he's still being treated. He's out of the hospital. He's doing fine. He didn't pass away. But now he's still being treated. He basically took the ultimate trip and became a drug. Now, the first question you asked yourself, this is a question I wrote in my notes, could you get high off this guy, basically, right? If he was still in a vegetative state and the doctor's like, oh, dude, I have a party, I have a party coming up and I didn't bring any snacks. I know what I'll do. I'll bring the drugs. And he's pulling blood out of this dude. Could you smoke his blood? Could you dry it? Could you drink it? Could you inject? Don't inject it yourself. There's just more spores. But could you get high off this dude's blood? If you, if you gave him a kiss, if you gave him a big old wet sloppy kiss, would you get high off the saliva? Could you? Because he basically is full of magic mushroom spores. Now, he would eventually die if you didn't cure him. But before he died, or like, right, you're like, no, no, don't do the cure yet. Don't do the cure yet. Ah, uh, yes. I'm getting high off your own supply. But then as I was getting ready to record this episode, I remembered something. Maybe about 100 episodes. I'll put it in the show notes. 100, 150 episodes ago. You guys will know where I'm headed with this now. And I'm sure Mason's like, oh, yeah. I covered a story called Skin. It was on the Arrowhead database. It was this woman who was writing it. It's great. I love that episode. Check it out. It'll be in the show notes. It's a story of a young couple who decides to start to experiment with meth. And she believes that their drug dealer's trying to turn them into drugs. Because the effects are so bad, she could squeeze her stomach and Crisco, like oily clumps of Crisco, would pour out of her skin. Half the story is just her sitting, <laughs> half the story is just her sitting in a sauna and black ooze is coming out of every part of her body. And she believed that if you scraped off the Crisco, the darkened Crisco grease, sorry if you're baking right now, you're like, dun, 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 dun. can't wait for these cookies to get done. As you're scraping off the grease, her psychotic belief was that you could smoke it. You could get high off that. She was thinking that this drug dealer was actually trying to turn her into this drug. She, he was going to get kept trapped in a basement or something like that and just be used to get other people high. And it's funny because I reported that story and everyone was just kind of creeped and grossed out by it. But it seems so fantastical. A woman in the midst of a meth psychosis. And then we have this. It's possible to turn a human being into drugs. I wonder if she was right. I wonder if there are people out there that are doing this on purpose to other people. Because you you can talk about adrenochrome all day long. This is a hundred times worse a hallucinogen that is cultured in a human body that would have to be incredibly potent and even if it wasn't more potent than normal magic mushrooms just the idea that it came from a human body in your mind would make it more valuable if you were a, a, a drug dude you're like, hey, dude, you're, I mean, you're like Jason, I smoke weed all the time. I don't want my weed to come out of some dude. But you know what I mean? Like, let's say you were some high level, rich celebrity person. And someone's like, hey, man, have you ever tried Jerry? People are like, what? no, what's Jerry? And they're like, Jerry, it's this new drug that we actually make in human bodies. You hold up a little red vial and be like, dude, it's going to get you lit. Don't inject it. Don't inject it. Or you might become the next Jerry. But you smoke this, you snort this. You drink this, you're going to get high. It's the best trip you've ever had. Try a little bit of Jerry. This story is real. This story has scientific proof behind it. This story actually happened. And the story of skin just seemed... It seemed like it could have been a fake story. Or it could have seemed like it was a woman's psychotic delusion. But it, it may turn out that this that her story may have actually been real. She may have dodged a bullet. She may have honestly been experimented on to be turned into a drug. This guy's attempt to alleviate his own depression may have opened a window to a world of drugs that most people don't even know exist. Drugs cultured and manufactured inside the human body. Everyone thinks it's a new crazy chemical from some lab in Germany, but it's actually the blood of a young woman who went missing, a young man whose family never stopped searching for him. A child who got lost, and nobody knows what happened to them. The designer drugs of the future may be made 
from the men and women who have gone missing in the past. So warning to all you psychonauts out there looking for the next designer drug. You spent years trying to find the next big high. It turns out the next big high was in you all along. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys.